Okay, today we're tying the Claret Dabbler, which has got to be one of my all-time favourite flies for lock-style fishing here, uh, whether that be in Australia or anywhere around the world for that matter. Uh, so in this case I'm using a, um, a partridge hook, actually, a, part uh, a Patriot uh, in a size 10. Normally I tie these in size 10s and size 12s, um, but I like these hooks because some dry fly hooks are quite light, where these are what I would call a medium gauge, and given that we'll be pulling these flies a lot, some of the takes can be quite savage. And if you use too light a hook, you run the risk of your hook straightening on the strike, which we wouldn't want. Uh, I'm using claret coloured thread, so in this case it's a, an 8.0 claret thread. And look, I, I used to tie these flies using pheasant tail dyed red for the tail, but pheasant tail can really be quite, quite weak at times. And I got annoyed because they were busting off all the time, so now I've gone back to using bronze mallard, which the fly is predominantly tied out of, but I put that in the tail as well. So we put in quite a long tail on these. Um, it's at least the length of the shank of the hook, if not slightly longer. It's just one of those flies that has a, has a long tail and it seems to work best when you, you have a long tail on it. Uh, then we'll tie in a, some fine copper wire. You know here, you can see here I'm leaving plenty of room back from the, um, the eye of the hook because we don't want to crowd the eye of the hook. There's a bit, a bit of tying in this, and you can tend to fill up the front here too much too early. So I've got our wire tied in, and then I'm going to put in my little hot spot in this fly. The traditional fly doesn't have that, but I use this uh, Hens Micro Flash or Spectra Dub. There's a few ones. It's a soft little bright orange. And with that, we're going to tie in. You only want a little bit here. We're going to tie a little orange butt onto the back of this fly. I like it because it just gives that little trigger point for the fish. So just a little butt there, don't overdo that. A little bit more wax and then we'll put in our claret seals fur. Uh, teasing out about that much. Might actually be a little bit too much. I'm running that forward, coming there behind that orange, just creating the rest of the body. That's about right. Okay, so we've got our underbody done. Then we're going to go to our hackle, which is going to run all the way through this. Um, I like to use saddle hackles for this, so you can see this is a good general like Rhode Island red saddle hackle. And we're just going to pick off the right length here. When you're um, purchasing a saddle hackle, just have a look at them. Sometimes they've got a variety of different sizes in them. And actually for the average tyre, that's probably not a bad way to go. Because that means you've got a lot of different flies you can get a lot of different fly sizes out of them. Some are only good for, say, 16s and 18s, so you can be more limited. So just have a look at your hackles. You see, we've got a good little saddle hackle there. Clip that off. Then we're going to tie this in, and actually I've got the natural camber so that it's facing backwards, because we want this to rake backwards when we tie it in. Right, get that there. And then coming down around the hook with the camber facing towards the back, we put in here about four turns. There we go. Lock that in with your copper wire and then come backwards through that hackle, four or five turns. So you can break that off. Lock in your copper. Again, that copper will just break off there. So that's the, the first bit of this done. Now we're going to get into the, um, the cloaking. Uh, so this fly is actually finished all the way around. It has a wing over the top, uh, and then it is cloaked around the sides with the bronze mallard. Now it's important to properly prepare your bronze mallard. We're looking to use the 
the dark bronze millard, not the light stuff here, it's the dark bronze millard that we're looking for. So what I'll do is I'll pull that off, get rid of that, and we're going to get a fairly good big clump for the top of it. So the way to do that is to, you notice I'm working this a bit, I pull that out from the, from the quill, from the middle, and I'm stroking my bronze millard out this way, which is making all the fibres about the same length. Then I can strip that off and fold it over. And that'll give us a good solid wing uh, to go over the top of the fly. Pop that on and you want that going back past the bend of the hook. So I pinch that there and then pull straight down. And you can see that's caught that nicely. Let's lock it off a bit more. And that's our overwing. So that's where the most of the feather goes. Cut that off as you go. Now we're going to do the sides. So I can get a bit more out of this one. So again, I'll stroke that out sort of about the same length. In this case, I think I'll cut it because I'm getting to the end of the feather. Again, folding it over to give it volume. And I'm going to lay this onto the side. Now, my side bits, or the throat if you like, are not going to be quite as long as the overwing. So I lay that in on the side, and I want this to sort of wrap around a bit. That's good, so that's sort of spread around the side of the hook. Again, cut that off. And then we'll do the same thing, we'll have to go to another feather now, on the other side. So The thing about feathers is they have a natural camber to them, and you can't work against that camber. Uh, if they want to pull to the left and you're trying to make them go to the right, it just doesn't work. So again, putting that in on the side and then cloaking that around, so spreading it around. Let's have a look. That's good. Again, cut that off. And then we finish off the head. We'll sit back and have a look at this. The traditional tying for a claret dabbler is that there'll be oh, almost as much feather underneath the hook as there will be on top of the hook in the wing. Um, I actually like to tie them so they're almost a little bit tent shaped, you know, a little bit like that. And the reason being is you can fish these as a wet fly, but equally you can fish them as a dry fly. So ginked up. Uh, and pulling them along the surface. And I found that sort of having more on the top of the hook than underneath the hook means they sit better on the water. And really, certainly in Mayfly time, particularly on the lakes down in Tasmania or on my favourite, you know, Lake Wendery in Ballarat, where you get good hatches of Mayfly, these are a fantastic fish or fl fly to fish right through the Mayfly hatch. This film was proudly brought to you by The Fly Fisher in Melbourne and theflyfisher.com.au where you'll find everything to tie the claret dabbler and a whole lot more.